Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you for joining us. You know, I, I want you to know, uh, I so appreciate the honor to get to be able to come and teach the Word. It is the greatest thrill of my life yes. to be able yes. to come and feed this Word to people that love the Word, yes. hungry for the Word, yes. honor the Word. And I tell you, the Word gives us the best life, yes. doesn't it? Yes. Amen. Yes. We've been looking in the past several episodes at a verse that we're going to start with again today. So go with us to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 28. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Classic translation. Paul is writing, and I so appreciate that this verse comes in a letter that Paul wrote while he's in prison. Now think of it. it. It really, it carries more weight with us when we realize where this man was sitting when he wrote this. He wasn't just sitting in a nice room somewhere. He was sitting in a place of opposition. He was sitting in a place to where no man wants to find himself. You know, it was a dark, a dark place for him, but he's learned how not to let it in him. He was in a place that the place wasn't in him. And um, I want us to see what Paul writes to us from prison. He says this, do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. Look at that. That, that, that entitles you for the rest of your life never to be troubled by anything opposition that comes against you. Never again. Amen. And I like how it, it puts not even for a moment, right? Not for a moment. And it says, for such constancy and fearlessness, talking about for us to be consistent in not letting fear in, yes. it will be a clear sign or proof or seal to them, our opponents and our adversaries of their impending destruction. But it's a sure token and evidence of our deliverance and salvation and that from God. We need to be consistent with our rejoicing because it shows that we believe the right thing. Yes. Yes. That we're holding to the right thing. Right. We're remembering the right thing. Um, there's going to be opposition, and sometimes opposition can look large. But remember, greater is he that's greater. in you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Opposition, is it pales in comparison to the greatness of the one who is in us. Um, have you ever noticed when describing the Holy Spirit, how he speaks to us? Um, in the Old Testament, remember the prophet was going through a time of opposition and he was in a particular cave and it said that um, God basically spoke to him and dealt with him and in, he had been talking to God. Basically, he was just saying, I, I'm tired of being the only one standing for you. <laughs> and God said, no, there's 7,000 who haven't, who haven't bowed their knee to Baal. So he was feeling alone, but God was saying, no, you're not alone. There's thousands, thousands who have not bowed and you're not alone in that. And he's in a cave at the time that God is talking to him and he says, and an earthquake comes. And he said, but God wasn't in the earthquake. Yeah. And then, you know, a great wind came and God wasn't in the wind. And it said, then a still small voice. God's yes. in, God yes. was in the still small voice. Yes. I'm saying that to say this, that just because something is loud doesn't mean it wins. Right. Circumstances can seem so loud. They can seem so boisterous. Yes. They can be so in your face, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, perceivable to your feelings. But God doesn't have to be that loud. Yes. 
<laughs> when you're so great, you don't got to put on a show yes. to prove your greatness. Yes. Yes. Right? Amen. Uh, only God is so great that can, he can be heard in the unsaid. You just know something. Yes. You know, it, the Spirit of God will speak and you just know it. You didn't necessarily hear words. There was just a knowing, the inward witness. That's because God is so great that an inward witness is enough. He doesn't need all of the in-your-face flash. Now, what I mean, opposition's in your face, yes. circumstances yes. in your face. Yes. The devil's always got to be loud. Why? Because he ain't all that. Right. <laughs> he ain't all that. Yes. People are too impressed with something who ain't all that. Right. <laughs> and I, I just say, don't be so impressed with what's loud. I don't care how loud something is. I don't care how many times a, a troubling thought bombards loudly yes. on your mind. Yes. Quit being impressed by that. Yes. Uh, you know, worry, worry is a bombardment. Yes. Fear, thoughts yes. of fear, words of fear are a bombardment. Right. Don't be impressed by that. The devil's got to be loud because he ain't all that. Right. <laughs> Jesus stripped him, spoiled him, reduced him to nothing. I'm about ready to jump out of this chair. I mean, God doesn't have to be all of this in your feelings, in your emotions, because he is all that. <laughs> he is all that power. He is all that ability. Amen. So don't, don't just go with the loudest thing in the room is what I'm saying. So many people live their life by the loudest thing in the room. And that's why they're unstable. That's why they get tossed to and fro because if they hear a troubling thought, they just go that direction. If they see troubling circumstances, they crumble to that because they're going with the loudest thing in the room. That's, that's, um, that's going to cheat you. Yes. Because uh, you need to go with the most right thing in the room. Yes. Go with the truth that's on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. I want us to read in Numbers chapter 13, and this is talking about when God delivered his people out of Egypt. And he delivered them out of, he delivered them out of a place because he was going to turn them into landowners. Right. I love, you know, for, for so many decades and years, the Hebrews were held in captivity. They were slaves to another nation. Yeah. They didn't own anything of their own. Yeah. Listen, when God delivered them, he turned them into owners. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not just borrowers, owners, yes. owners. Yes. And Numbers 13 and verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan. You see, God's delivered his people out of Egypt. They're free, but he's telling them something. Send these men and that they search out the land of Canaan. Look at the next words, which I give. Yes. I give. Yes. I give yes. unto the children of Israel. Listen, when God gives it, it doesn't matter who says you can't have it. Amen. Amen. The key words was, I give. Yes. They didn't have to earn it. Right. They didn't have to do anything but just follow the one who gave it. Yes. That's all they had to do. I love those words. Send them to search out the land that I gave. Yes. So when God says these words that I gave, is it theirs or not? Yes. It's theirs. Yes. The title deed of it in the spirit realm is theirs. Yes. Although their feet weren't on it yet, mm -hmm. although there were others occupying that land, in God's mind and in the spirit realm, it was theirs. Yes. Yes. And God expects us to move based on what he already made ours. Yes. Not what has shown up as ours, yes. but what yes. he made ours. That's healing. That's yes. victory. That's yes. prosperity. Yes. That's peace. That's joy. Yes. That's properties. Yes. That's homes. Yes. That's businesses. Yes. When he says it's yours, it's yours. And don't let anything around you tell you you can't have it. Yes. That's right. So God gave it to them before they took possession of it. Yes. You may have to remember that. Yes. It's not who's in possession, it's who did God give it to. Yes. Oh, Amen. Yeah. If God gives it to me, it'll come into my possession. Yes. 
as long as I cooperate with what God gave yes. me. Yes. Amen. So God gave it to them before they ever took possession mm -hmm. of it, but it was still theirs. Still theirs. Yes. When the 12 men returned from searching the land, we see something demonstrated. Mm -hmm. We see two sides of thinking. We see right thinking and we see wrong thinking. Yes. Now, what's going to determine whether or not you're frightened by the enemy is going to be not determined by what the enemy does, but by how you think. Mm -hmm. yeah. how we yeah. think. Yes. Because the enemy's been defeated. Yeah. Satan's been yeah. defeated. Jesus stripped and spoiled yeah. principalities and powers, made a show of them openly. Mm -hmm. They have been defeated, but how you think yes. is going to determine the outcome yeah. Yeah. of things in, in your life. Yeah. Now, I want you to see what right thinking looks like because remember, God told them, I give this land. It's already theirs yeah. yes. in, that, in the sense God gave it to them. It doesn't matter who calls it something theirs. If God didn't give it to them, it ain't theirs. Yes. <laughs> and they're going to have to give it up. Yes. <laughs> Numbers 13 and verse 30. Uh, after the spies, you know, had gone to the land, it says, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. We are well able to overcome it. Now notice this. He realizes God's given it to them, but it's now their privilege to go possess what God's made theirs. And notice he said, let's go up at once. Yeah. Why? Because the longer you think about what God told you to do, the more the devil, you're giving the devil opportunity to talk you out of it. Have you ever noticed this? I've not, I, I have a system for my own life. For example, if God tells you to give somebody Say he tells you to give somebody $1,000. The longer you think about that, the more you're going to struggle against you, about giving it. Why? Because you gave the devil time to oppose you in your thought life. So I've learned this. When I know something is God, now that's the key. I have to know it's God. Once I know it's God, brother, we own it. And I know it's time for me to move on it. God has said things to me 30 years ago that I'm just now even coming into. But God said it long ago, not because he, it was going to take him long, but because I had to develop to the place where he could bring me into it. But when God says something is yours and you know it's, it's yours now, this is what you do, what Caleb said, let us go up at once. Why? Because then we're not giving the devil time to work yes. on our heads Amen. and disqualify us Amen. from this. Amen. So right thinking is let us go up at once and possess it. And look at this. For we are well able to overcome it. Why? Because of what God said. Not because we're great warriors, but because God said it's ours. Yes. Caleb and Joshua held to what God said. He, yes. they, didn't, they didn't base their strategies on how they looked. Yes. Right. Yes. That's right. These were slaves that had been delivered out of Egypt. They weren't military men. Yes. They weren't trained in fighting. They didn't have the weaponry of military men. They had the word that God said, yes. that's your land. Yes. Yes. Now, so we see right thinking there. But that was Numbers 13 verse 30 and verse 33, but sandwiched in between verses 30 and 33 were wrong words. Yes. Look at verse 31. But the men that went up with Caleb and Joshua said, we be not able to go up against the people. They are stronger than we. Now see, this is the difficulty here. Didn't Caleb and Joshua see what these other 10 spies saw? Yes, but Caleb and Joshua saw it spiritually and the other 10 were looking at the natural. There's the difference. Right thinking goes with what God says and what's the spiritual. Wrong thinking is always judging by the natural, what things look like in this realm. And so the 10 spies said, we be not able. Ah, they had to forget what God said to even let that statement come out of their mouth. We be not able to go up against the people. They are stronger than we. Listen, in Nancy Dufresne, there is nothing that can bless you. But in the God in Nancy Dufresne, there's everything. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
In you, it's the same way. There's nothing in you, in your flesh, but the God in you contains and holds everything and he will flow through your flesh. He will flow through your mind. He will flow through your words. Amen. And so what these 10 spies are talking about is their flesh. Joshua and Caleb are talking about the God that's in their flesh. <laughs> Amen. Verse 32, and so these 10, they brought up an evil report yes. of the land. See, they were talking evil. Mm -hmm. Do you know talking doubt and unbelief is evil? Yes. It's not just a crime that's evil. Words that are against mm -hmm. God, what God says is evil. Yes. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched under the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. So they're saying they're bigger than we are. And there we saw the giants and the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in theirs. So what are they doing? They're measuring these enemies next to them. Joshua and Caleb measured the enemies next to God. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Wrong thinking. Yes. When Paul said in Philippians 1.28, don't for a moment be frightened. Don't you be intimidated. It depends on what you're going to measure next to. If you're going to measure things next to you and your ability you're, you're not going to be able to walk that word out. But if you'll measure it next to the God in you, don't, you'll never be frightened again. Amen. So we see this, whether or not we're frightened and how we handle and how we face opposition is based on one thing, how we think. How we think. Now go with me to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 7. And uh, it reads, And they, Joshua and Caleb, spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding great land. Now, the, the verses just prior to this, remember what the ten spies that brought the evil report. They said, um, The land which we searched saying uh, the land we've gone through, it, it's a land that eats up its inhabitants. That's not what these men are saying. Said it's a good land. It's an exceeding good land. When it says exceeding good land, it means there's no land that exceeds this one. This land is better than any other land. And notice verse 8, uh, Numbers 14. If the Lord delight in us, how will the Lord delight in us? Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if the Lord delight in us, if we'll stay in faith, if we'll keep believing that what he said, that that land he gave to us, he's already given, he's not going to give it to us when we arrive there. He's already given us. We're just going to go up and possess what he already gave us. Verse 8, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. Look at that. That's the, he's going to do this. It's not about are we grasshoppers, are you grasshoppers, are they big, are we small? It's about he's going to bring us in. Listen, I want you to know Jesus already brought you in. You're not waiting for him to bring you in anymore. He already brought you in. You in, baby. <laughs> You're in. You need to see yourself as I'm already in. I'm already Healing, in. I'm already in. Prosperity, yes. I'm already in. And everything that's not of that, you better get off. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, he will bring us into this land and give it us. Mm -hmm. A land that flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 9. Here's the warning. Only rebel not mm -hmm. against yes. the Lord. Neither fear the people of the land. I like this. They are bred for us. The 10 doubting spies called them giants. The two faith people said they're our food. They're, we're going to eat these boys. We're going to eat up this. They're not going to eat us up. We're going to eat them up. I love this. They, look, I love this. They are bred for us. Then look at the next phrase. Their defense is departed from them. 
I don't care that they're big. I don't care that they're big. God's not working for them. That's right. Their, their, ta- their height is all they got going for them. We got God going for us. He said their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Now look at this. He's saying if you get into fear, this shuts everything down. That's why Paul said over in Philippians 1, uh, verse 28, do not for a moment be frightened. Don't be intimidated by anything, by your opponents, by your adversaries. Why? Fear will shut you down. Fear will shut you down from partaking of the land that's already yours, from partaking of the blessings that are yours, the inheritance that are yours. You don't have to travel to get on it. It's yours. But fear will keep you from eating it. I love this statement that Josh and Kayla made. They are bread for us. Mm -mm -mm. Um, Experts agree. Our bodies need a well-balanced diet, right? One food group can't supply everything that our physical body needs. There's proteins and vegetables and fruits and grains and different things. Um, One won't substitute for the other. Right. Right. If you're, if you're missing, if you're missing, say like proteins, vegetables can't make up for that. You know, one can't make up for the other. Um, but one part is there's grains. Grains are part of the human diet, right? I don't know about you, but if there's bread, (laughs) I don't like cold bread. I like hot bread, right? Now, we know everything has to be done in measure, right, in balance. You can't just sit and eat a whole loaf, <laughs> right? But if you're going to eat bread, eat it hot. Yes, yes. Josh and Caleb said, these enemies, they bread. <laughs> Let's eat them hot. Yes. Don't let it go cold. Yes. Don't sit and wander in your mind, can this happen? Can we do this? Yes. For 40 yes. years, they were letting their bread cool off. Hot bread goes down easier than cold bread. (laughs) The hotter the bread, the better it tastes going down. Amen. I'm just saying this. When you see opposition, don't sit and mentally try to whip it. Very good. At once, use your faith. At once, go after it. Wow. But Pastor Nancy, you don't understand. It's threatening. Yeah, it's hot. It tastes better when it's hot. Let it talk. Let the devil talk. Let opposition talk. But you let, the thing is, is that when they said it's our bread, notice this, giants are your nourishment. You can't develop strong spiritually without opposition. There has to be something of resistance to develop your spiritual yes. faith muscles, if I could put it that way, yes. right? There's a, a woman, many of you may have heard of her. She's gone home to be with the Lord, but her, um, her name was Lillian B. Yeomans, and I would encourage you to get hold of her books. She had four books on divine healing, wonderful. She was a medical doctor, found herself on the deathbed. She'd been backslid for years, got back into right fellowship with God, was raised up off of, off, of, off of her deathbed, and she went to teaching divine healing for the rest of her life. Because she was an instructor in Amy Simple McPherson's Bible school at one, at one time out here in Southern California in the early half of the 1900s. One of the students asked her one time, because they knew she was a medical doctor, They said, is there any particular diet that you would endorse? She said, absolutely. They said, what is it? She said, a diet of giants. Every day, eat up every giant that stands in your way. Eat up every opposition. Eat up everything that threatens and opposes you and every adversary. Don't run from them. Eat them up. Don't act like they're not there. Don't try to, don't try to, so to speak, uh, hope they'll just go away. Go after it with your, with the word of God. Put that word in your mouth. Go after it. This is what Joshua and Caleb said. Let us go up at once. They're bread for us. Let's go eat it. But because they didn't, they got weaker and weaker until that whole generation died out without a victory. Never had the victory that belonged to them to that generation. Amen. Amen. So uh, if, if giants are our bread, why do some people call giants their bread and others call them their defeat? 
because the 10 spies called these giants their defeat. Their defeat. Yes. Yes. But Josh and Caleb called them their bread. Amen. What is that? Right or wrong thinking? Yes. Amen. Faith is right thinking. Doubt's wrong thinking. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when we're fearful, we're thinking wrong. Yes. Now, don't misunderstand me. Thoughts of fear will come, but right thinking won't accept those thoughts. Amen. They won't take them in. Yes. Amen. It's not giants that defeat us. It's wrong thinking that defeats us. Because you know what? J Joshua and Caleb went in 40 years later and ate them up. Yes. Ate them up yes. and got stronger, yes. took possession. Yes. And so it's not the giants that, because if it was the giants that was their undoing, Joshua and Caleb could have never defeated them, but they did. They yes. ate them up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Giants that we encounter are spiritual nourishment. That's right. yes. yeah. Nourishing our faith, yes. nourishing, yes. nourishing our skill in the word. Amen. Amen. There is a spiritual nourishment and strength that we de derive from eating giants that you can't, you can't get any other way. Right. You can't get the nourishment out of one food group if it's not there. It's the same thing spiritually. There are only certain spiritual nourishment that comes to you when you see opposition, you face it, and you say, ah, the word's great enough for that. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, it's all about our thinking. Yes. I said it's yes. all about our thinking, how we think about it. Thoughts of the word will cause you to think right. Yes. And it's not based on what you are in the flesh. It's based on who you are in him. Yes. When you got born again, uh, your, your, your strength, your value, your ability is of him. Yes. It's not, it's not just in the flesh and what you can accomplish in your own ability. That's right. That is the grace of God. Right. Amen. 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 When we let the greater one in us work and we put him to work and we lean on him. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, we're, we're having a good time finding this out. Amen. We're going we, we gonna, we to up our diet. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We're giant eaters. We're not out looking for them, but if they get in our way, we're not going to run from and, and lay down and let wrong things happen in our life just because we don't want to face something. We go up at once. We're consistent. We got our faith at the front door ready to take on our victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, until, you, until we see you next time, we want you to always remember this. Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Paducah, Kentucky at World Harvest Church of Paducah, May 21st through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They come for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm, in healing, and in gifts of healings. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you 
to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.